Hello and welcome to another episode of the AWS Ninja. This short talk would be about a small topic, which is the versioning inside Amazon Managed Rules or AMRs uh, for AWS WAF. So uh, in case you noticed, some AMRs, and I'll be using the term AMR throughout this call, so uh, this talk, sorry. So some AMRs have a version detail in them. So if you edit an AMR, you'll see that we have a version. And for the version, we might have like a couple or more, as you see here, and we also have the default version. On top of that, we also have an SNS topic that you can subscribe to. And by that, you basically opt into notifications about changes in new versions as they come out for this specific AMR in that specific uh, region. Um, and Basically, what that means is if you have an application that you just want to have someone else manage and control the security for, using an AMR is a perfect option uh, for you and you can just leave it in default. When there's a new version, it will be rolled out into the default after a, you know, a number of days or whatever time it takes AWS to, to understand that this new version is safe to use in the wild. So if you have a look in this known bad inputs AMR, for example, I'm using the default one for now, and you'll see I only have these four rules. But if I opt into the newest version, I'll see a bunch of others, mostly log4j related, it seems. And that means that the default version isn't really using the latest one. In due time, probably it will. But for now, if I'm using the default, I'm safe. I'm safe from uh, uh, the disruptive changes introduced into my applications without being, without being tested. Now, if you have a very sensitive application that you don't want to take no risks with, you probably want to pick a specific version and thoroughly test it and then stick with it until you thoroughly test a new version. But when you do, when you switch over to a specific version, there, is a few, there are a few things you should be uh, aware of. So firstly, once you do, there is a new CloudWatch metric specific to the AMR and version that you're using called days to expiry. And that's created only when you have an effective non-default version used in one of, one of your uh, web ACLs. Once you do, you'll see that this one, the 1.9 version is stuck on 90. It's, uh, and, it, and it started counting when I enabled it on my web ACL just, you know, a short while ago. Uh, it will be stuck on 90 as long as the AMR is valid and rather new. Once AWS set it, set it to expire, you'll have this drop daily. So from 90 to 89, then 88, daily it will drop until it gets to zero. And on that day, when the AMR version gets to zero, if you are still using it in one of your web ACLs, AWS will swap your version to default. So make sure you are subscribed to the notifications on the SNS topic. Also, make sure that you're subscribed to this, channel, to this channel as it will provide various other tutorials around the same topics. So um, this is one key thing you should know about using versions. You should use default by default unless you have concerns uh, that changes might break your application. And in this case, switch over to a specific version but make sure to track the expiry date on CloudWatch, right? So you know. Also make sure that you keep track of new versions because when there are new versions, typically that also means that there are new risks that needs to be addressed. Hence the log4j bunch of new signatures or rules in the managed rule group. Now, what to do with these versions? So how do I test versions? So really quickly, there are three ways basically to manage versions in your web ACL. The simplest way is to use a staging web ACL. So this, let's say a production web ACL associated with my, for this example, CrowdFront distribution or ALB or whatever. And if there is a new version now for one of the AMRs that I use in production, I would typically have a staging resource. So a staging CloudFront distribution or a staging a ALB or API Gateway. And that would have a copy of this web ACL with the newest versions enabled. 
and then I, I thoroughly test these new versioned web ACLs and if everything goes well, I will copy over the configuration into my production. So basically the production web ACL is exactly similar to the staging web ACL until there's a new version. And then I upgrade the version on my staging environment, test that, if all goes well, I upgrade the version on my production environment. Again, if I'm using non-default, if only if I'm using non-default, that's one way. Another methodology is if you have enough room under your WCU limit, and in this case, you'll see that I have 975 out of the 1500 capacity units for this web ACL. So I have enough room to add AMRs a second time. So let's say there's a change in this AMR. This AMR is, I think, 200, 200 WCUs. So let's have a look again. Yeah, 200 WCUs. So I have plenty of room left under my WCU limit. By the way, you can increase that limit through a uh, support ticket. I think they get all the way up to 2,500. Um, and once you have enough space, you can use CLI or API, only CLI or API, you can do it through the web interface to add the same AMR twice with different versions and different actions. So basically what you want to do is you want to copy over this uh, 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 web ACL in JSON form and add a second rule on top of the blocking rule. So let's say this is in blocking mode. This is non-count. I would add the same rule with a new version in count on top of this AMR, meaning that I'll have one rule with a new version and under it the old rule will the old version. And the reason for this order is I want to make sure that all requests are inspected in count mode on the new version before they get blocked on the old version because the old version will be blocking in case there is a match. So the new version goes on top, the old ver version goes on bottom, and you only have to use CLI or API. On that, I'll leave a link in the description to the CLI documentation and how to do that, how to add rules through CLI. That's the second option. So first, staging environment. Second, staging rule within the production environment. And the third option, which is not to be used ever, I'm just stating it so you know about it, you know ne no, never to use that, that would be to switch your uh, managed rule from blocking to count with the new version. So again, let's say I have uh, I've, I've been using version uh, 1.7 and I've been using it in count, uh, sorry, in blocking, and that's fine. I've already uh, protected my application against these risks, which is super, but now version 1.9 comes out. I can swap out the new version to count and recalibrate it and make sure that no false positives are happening, but this is a bad idea. This will take down my security level from level 1 to level 0.5. Uh, and, and typically when there, when there is an update to an AMR, that means that there are new risks that needs to be addressed out there in the wild. So switching a blocking AMR to counting AMR, that's generally a bad idea. So don't do that. that that's not a pattern. That's an anti-pattern. I'm just stating it so you can avoid it, right? So if you cannot afford the extra WCUs in your web ACL, or you don't have a staging environment for whatever reason, just keep the default version. Just keep the default and it will slowly, gradually roll out to the most advanced version when it becomes stable and trusted. So just use the default. These are your three options. Staging environment, multiple AMRs under the same web ACL, or just use the default. That was it about AWS WAF versioning. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And again, thanks for watching.